270-365-3545 to apply today. First at a National Bank Equal Housing Lender, Federal Registry 409424, NMLS 1002990. It's here now. The all-new 2019 Silverado from Chevrolet with the steely-eyed front end that will surely grab your attention. Space, comfort, and convenience all found in its accommodating interior. With built-in 4G LTE Wi-Fi makes communicating simple. The new Silverado is mostly steel, unlike Ford, who went with aluminum for better fuel mileage. The Silverado gets you 20 22 MPG on highway and a stronger truck. The all-new Chevrolet Silverado will still be the most dependable, longest-lasting truck you will ever own. Trice Hughes Incorporated, Highway 91, Princeton. The holiday season is here, and Penner Royal Home Medical is having a huge sale on hundreds of items to make your daily life easier and safer. They have great deals on America's number one rated lift chairs with up to 40% off manufacturer's suggested retail price. Personal alert monitors are $1.99 and up. No month fees ever. If quality counts, call Penaryl Home Medical. 1-800-445-8002. Here's a reminder from your Princeton Electric Plant Board. Meter tampering is dangerous. Tampering with an electric meter is not only dangerous, it is dishonest and against the law. Stealing electricity by tampering with an electric meter may result in your arrest and can even risk your life. Tampering with meters results in increased utility bills that everyone has to pay. If you see anyone tampering with an electric meter, call the Princeton Electric Plant Board right away at 270-365-2031. Princeton Electric Plant Board, Princeton's number one energy source. 1580, 103.3 WPKY. Good morning. Time is 840. It is 31. We are joined by Capital Cinema's Mike Cherry. Good morning, Mike. Good morning to you and everybody listening. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. My pleasure. My pleasure. Appreciate you asking me. Yeah, well, we're glad to have you here. So you have some movies coming up tomorrow right well we have movies movie. we have movies coming up seven days a week 52 weeks a year okay well we were going to talk about i thought thought we were going to talk about the christmas movies you got coming up. sure sure yeah. sure sure and, and we've got coming we've got two right now showing um of course we change movies thursday's the end of our movie week and then from friday to the following thursday is the week so we've just started a new week we brought in robin hood which is not necessarily a christmas movie of course but it's the legendary Robin Hood, and uh, we've got the Dr. Zeus, the Grinch showing, and we've got Ralph Breaks the Internet, which is Christmas-oriented movie, now showing. In fact, Ralph Breaks the Internet and Dr. Zeus are the number one and two movies in the nation by a, by a pretty good margin. Uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet's number one, and the Grinch is number two. Grinch was number one for several weeks until Ralph knocked it out. Uh, we've got coming... Uh, Coming December the fourteenth, uh, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. That's supposed to be a that's supposed to be a big hit. They're all tied into Christmas, not necessarily Christmas movies. However, the next one coming is certainly a Christmas movie. That's a rerun of Mary Poppins. It's it's uh, uh, it's not necessarily a rerun. It's a new story. It's a it's a follow-on to the original Mary Poppins. This one's called Mary Poppins Returns. It's uh, it's Disney and full-fledged Christmas movie. And it opens December the 19th on a Wednesday. We, we, we expect pretty big things out of, well, so does the industry out of Mary Poppins. Then on December the 21st, uh, Bumblebee comes in. Boy, that was a tough decision between Bumblebee and Aquaman for that, for that date. Uh, Aquaman, Aqua, not Aqua, <laughs> Aquaman may do bigger at the national box office. I don't think it will here in Princeton. Talked to several, several younger people, and they all pre preferred Bumblebee. So that starts 21 December, you know Bumblebee. I don't. Okay, well, that's a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it's a it's a it's a series of Transformers. Okay, and, okay, and Bumblebee all right. becomes a uh, Chevy Camaro or a fighting machine. Right, to save, a Transformer. To, yeah, to save the to save the save the universe. Now, something that's unusual about this particular year is we're having four free movies. Normally, we have one sometimes two this year we're having we're having four one of them starts tomorrow and that will be the star uh, a beloved uh, kids movie that has to do with the nativity and a donkey who finds himself part of the nativity scene uh, uh, 
a lot of uh, church groups used to come to see that movie when we, when we ran it regular. But now it's just a one one shot deal. Saturday morning, tomorrow morning, doors open ten. Movie starts at ten thirty. Get there early to get the best seats, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The star, and it's brought to you by our good friends at Planters Bank. They uh, they are one of our routine sponsors or formerly sponsors, and we're they're sponsoring the star on Saturday, December the eighth. The following Saturday, December the fifteenth, a Christmas story comes again doors open 10 movie starts at 10 30 uh it's free to everybody kids of all ages as we like to say uh coda young mayor elect coda young i guess i ought to say or can say he's sponsoring that and we invite everybody to come now something unusual that we haven't done before we'll see how it goes on thursday december the 10th we're going to have a late night movie, a pajama party, uh, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's on the internet, uh, and uh, Heidi Boyd, the owner of the Capitol Cinemas, I'll get back to that in a moment. Uh, Thursday, December the 10th, 9.30, doors will open, 10 o'clock movie. It's a little more adult Christmas movie. It's National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. And our final free movie for the season is Saturday, December the 22nd, Polar Express, one of the one of the most beloved, I think, or most uh, popular uh, Christmas Christmas movies for let me say this generation. Doors open 10, movie starts at 10:30. Polar Express, another of our banking friends, First Southern Bank sponsors sponsors that one. Uh, that's Saturday, December the 22nd. Thursday, December the 10th, is our pajama party at the theater. Uh, talking about Heidi Boyd, a lot of people think I own the theater. I do not. I did. Uh, when I came home, um, I got involved in reopening the theater, and uh, that's our situation now. But I do. Part of Heidi and I's uh, arrangement is that I do the booking, the advertising, and the scheduling of, of the movies. And so if you've got a complaint about what we're showing, come see me. But let me say that... <laughs> The issue is so tough. You got three theaters, I mean, three screens in our theater, and over a season like this, when particularly the the producers and makers and bookers of the movies and the movie companies, uh, they require two to three weeks of playtime. So if you take three weeks and you got three screens, you you can't you can't get in everything you everything you want because I can't bring a movie in to show for three weeks right in the middle of one that I've got obligated for three weeks. Uh, so it's it's sometimes a sometimes tough decision, like in Bumblebee and Aquaman. That, that was a tough decision, which one to take. And, of course, a lot of people would rather it be the other way around. Uh, <laughs> Well, I think I've talked in, uh, talked enough here for a few minutes. I I remind everybody that uh, for about 24 years since we reopened about 24 years ago, uh, you've got a 24-hour show info number, which is 365-7900, and you'll hear me saying, Welcome to Capitol Cinemas. Movies and showtimes for the weekend are, and let me do that, the showtimes for the weekend, Robin Hood shows Friday, that would be today, of course, 6.30 and 9.15, Saturday 1, 3.45, 6.30 and 9.15, and Sunday 1, 15, 4 and 6.45. Now, all three of our movies will be starting at the same time. So, see, Robin Hood or The Grinch or Ralph Breaks the Internet, and that will they will play through a late movie at 9.15 this evening, or tomorrow evening. No, this evening. Today is Friday, all day. Mr. I've talked enough. Uh, ask me something. Well, or send me home, whatever yeah. you want to do. <laughs> okay, so you said since the doors reopened 24 years ago, is that what you just said? 86, so, yeah. So, I mean 96, not 86, excuse me. Do you know when the theater opened and closed the first time? Well, this particular building was built in 1937. Uh, and it closed in, I want to think, 84. It was a one-screen theater. Uh, the... Uh, the, the movie industry all of a sudden found itself in a fight for viewership with, uh, with the cassette world, with uh, VHS, and, and, and new things came along. And that's still the problem with attendance. You got hula hoop. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. You got hula hoop, <laughs> and you got streaming, and you got YouTube. You got all these things that compete with the theater, and it, it's, it's really a tough business. Of course, 
in a in a relative we're the small we're the smallest theater in Kentucky uh, in the context of the smallest county population the smallest county theater in the state so by definition it it's 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 a it's a tough go because if it wasn't the big boys would be here uh, back to your original question this building in 1937 because the Savoy theater which sits on the same site as the Capitol cinema pretty much a wooden situation uh, burned uh, in 37 or I guess it was 36 uh, and the current building was rebuilt the uh, uh, art deco facade and it was it was rebuilt to take this place the Savoy the Savoy <laughs> My grandmother played the piano there, and the, it, 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 it dates back to the silent era, and uh, around the turn of the century, it was built. Well, so now, you say she played the piano, so correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but during the silent film times, they actually had people in there playing music while the movie was showing, is that correct? Yes, but I wouldn't say people playing music that infers there's a band there may have at some point in time been a band somewhere but but basically the silent movies were set up with an, a piano accomplishment and that's that's accompaniment and that's all you that's all that's all you had I, it would have been unusual to have a full band come in right but it, I, I guess i meant it was live music live, oh yeah live, oh yes somebody yes, was yes, sitting yes, there yes, actually playing, playing piano uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. and uh -huh. your grandmother had that on her here in my Princeton. grandmother in the in the early part of the nineteenth of the twentieth century, I guess you could say, did that. Uh, anyway, so so I've got I've got roots uh, in Princeton big time, and my wife is uh, Gail Rudd, which she graduated in sixty four and was the was the mayor for eight years up until last year, and then she didn't run again, and of course that's history. Uh, okay. Okay, so then they reopened in 84. I mean, they, they closed in 84. Yeah, they, it was Martin Theater. It was owned by Chain. It wasn't individually owned. It's never been up until now. It's never been owned by a single single person, a single entity. It's always been part of a chain. That's just the way the theater works. Very few independents like we are. I mean, most everybody is part of Carmike or what have you, you know, 3,000 screens and so forth. <laughs> and... It, that building, so that, I mean, that particular area has been nothing but a theater since it was up? Nothing but a theater since the turn of the century. Last century, not this century. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that, that's neat. That's neat to yeah. see that it survived this long. Well, of course, back in the day, every little town had a theater. Edible had one. Uh, uh, Marion had one. Katie's had one. And they all, they all folded. And this one came very, very near folding. Uh, except we couldn't figure out what to do with it. When I came home, somehow it didn't take very long for me to be chairman of the Tourism Commission, and uh, one of our big goals was to do something with the theater. A gentleman from southern Indiana who has a little, uh, has four or five theaters, was driving through town, saw the old building sitting there, uh, went by the Chamber of Commerce and said, who owns that building? Well, I don't know. Go call Mike Cherry. He's, he's a tourism guy, and they're doing something with it. He called, and the rest is history. We got uh, we got the the, ma the controlling company, which was which was Carmike Theaters. We got them to donate it to the city, and the city sold it to us for a nominal fee, with the caveat that couldn't do anything with it but do a theater. And I tell you, back in the back in the late '90s, when we were going through all this, it. Um, there's nothing much you can do with them except tear it down and make a parking lot out of it, which the cost to tear that big edifice, steel and brick, uh, to tear it down would have been uh, would have been an undertaking that certainly a private individual wouldn't take. You'd have to have well have to have uh, taxpayers' money to tear it down, and get rid of it, and 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 nobody was interested in doing that so it was just really luck we tried several things to do with it make it a make it a make it a religious bookstore and use the uh, use the theater part as a, as a open to uh, uh, people who wanted to walk and and uh, an exercise kind of a free exercise area uh, of course while we were doing that all of a sudden started springing up uh, other venues for people to go and of course we thought well let's make it a community playhouse type situation then the butler uh, organization butler uh, caldwell county association got together and reopened the butler auditorium so we were kind of left with nothing to do with capital cinema and i mean it, i couldn't and it just fate 
or something intervened and had this guy driving through on his way to Florida for a family vacation just pulled off the road and thought he liked to drive by through little towns or towns I shouldn't call us little uh, in the movie business we are but not really in the local business uh, and he just pulled off and drove through town saw the old theater talked to chamber of commerce and as I say we uh, we had some hurdles to to uh, cross and we did and and reopened the reopened the theater 23 4 years ago that's a neat story so somebody mm-hmm. just driving through town and and yeah, yeah. you know and just if, if he hadn't done that because because i'd been in contact with the representative of the owner of the theater there uh and, and trying to get them to return to princeton saying oh how how what a vibrant community we are and we're growing and we can support and the gist of the conversation, two or three conversations with this gentleman who was a vice president of Carmike or, or whatever, uh, the gist of it was kind of he would laugh and say, well, here's the deal. We don't do anything new less than a sixplex. Hmm. And if you haven't got a 50,000 population area, we're not even going to talk about it. So, you know, you don't see anybody building first-run theaters at, at – smaller communities throughout the state or anywhere else they're all closing but in the end you were able to convince him to sell it well the owner was uh, the owner was the big company Mm -hmm. this this guy wasn't owner. this guy and i went into partnership and he was to to reopen it but had a bank loan and uh got by on a shoestring but put it back put it back together where it would operate and of course made three screens you couldn't begin to do a theater really unless it's an artsy craftsy thing in a big city you couldn't begin to do a theater for uh, with one screen uh, you, you know you'd miss out on two-thirds of the movies so we made a, a three screen theater by closing up the balcony running a wall between the between the halves of the balcony <coughs> and making it a three-screen operation. The downstairs screen is the biggest, uh, as far as I know, the biggest in western Kentucky in terms of seating capacity. Uh, we seat uh, uh, 320 people in our downtown theater and sold it out a time or two back in the our biggest movie ever since we went open has been Passion of the Christ, if you mm-hmm. remember, remember that movie. We had, uh, we had a, great, a great business and needed it desperately, as we always do. And you seem to offer um, current movies, so you're not like you know behind where everybody's no. like, I don't want to wait till it comes to town. We're a first run. We're a first run theater. Every one of the movies, I well, not every one of them. Robin Hood has been out a couple of weeks, but Doctor Zeus, The Grinch, Ralph Breaks the Internet, Spider Man, Mary Poppins, Bumblebee, Aquaman. I, I mean, there. I don't mean Aquaman. I mean Bumblebee and Mary Poppins. Anyway, those are first run movies, and uh, when we first opened the the kind of the unspoken agreement between uh, Mr. McSparin, Mark McSparin, who was the the guy who drove through town um, from southern Indiana. Anyway, we were going to run, we were going to run second shot, you know, movie be out two weeks and then we'd run it for the third week because you got a discounted price on, on, on the movie. And, but we, we learned real, real quick that if we didn't have it on first run, we didn't do any business. Mm-hmm. I mean, the other local areas are too, uh, if you want to see a movie, you're not going to sit around and wait for us for two weeks to see it. Mm-hmm. I mean, one out of ten of you may, but that doesn't get it done. Sure, sure. So, Mike, tell me, and uh, you know, unfortunately we're, we're running out of time sure. again, but tell me what the prices are for your movies. Well, we there's two there's two tiers of prices one is the evening mm-hmm. and then the other is the matinee matinees are <clears throat> before six o'clock they're four dollars and fifty cents for for seniors and kids kids uh 12 and, and below and uh, uh 550 for for adults and that goes up in the evenings to 550 for kids and seniors and uh, uh 750 for for adults you're not going to find very many first-run theaters at, at that price. I have people. Uh, of course, they've got a lot of amenities we don't, but we, we can't afford to make fancy improvements uh, unless, attendance, <laughs> unless attendance goes up and attendance may not ever go up. In fact, attendance for the last 20 years has been on a slide. I mean, just a little bit, little bit less most years, not, not every year, but it's, it's an up-and-down trend that generally trends 
trends down. Well, maybe we can get Caldwell to, to kind of help their local theater survive. Well, for our population, the community has. The community, we would not have been digital. In fact, we would have closed down because digital went, I mean, uh, the old 35 millimeter film went by the wayside a couple of three years ago. And you had to either upgrade or, or, or get out. And we upgraded uh, to uh, high def uh, picture quality with the help of of the community we ran a little fun drive and uh, the community raised probably half the cost of uh, of installing high definition and oh by the way something else the community does <coughs> excuse me uh, something else the community does is is get behind our discount ticket prices we have we sell packages of discounted tickets uh, and they make great stocking stuffers and, and, and little Christmas presents and things that people will generally always use. And you can get them anytime between now and the first of the year at the theater itself during our opening hours. Okay, Mike, well, we sure appreciate you coming in this morning. Unfortunately, like I said, our time has run out. Sure. But Mike Cherry from Capital Cinema right here in Princeton, your own very own theater that has managed to survive since... 1933 with a little ups and downs. 37 with a little ups and downs. Excuse me. Thank you sure. for that correction. Right. Thank you for coming, Mike. Okay. Here's your WPKY Weather Edge Weather Center forecast.